Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of AZ Drone Talk. My name is Greg Reverdio. And I'm Rich Charpentier. And today we're talking about a topic from someone that follows us, that asks us about, and we are talking about, can you fly over an HOA? And can an HOA actually restrict you from flying? So we did a little bit of digging, and uh, I had some ideas about this before, and I think Rich, you did a little bit of digging online. Uh, what did you find? Well generically speaking, looking through, so just doing a Google search on HOAs and drone flight, I'm coming across a lot of old documents. So people published a lot of stuff in 2016. Um, one of the major ones was HOAleader.com, and they had multiple articles with multiple suggestions. Um, basically, HOAs are trying to figure it out, and they're, you know, it's, it's literally up in the air right now. And, you know, pun intended, I suppose. But um, HOAs can restrict a lot on your property. And I actually lived in an HOA for nine months to get out of the Airstream several years ago just for some space. Um, what I found in that neighborhood was that the neighbors were always watching over your fence. Well, that's HOAs for you. The, um, <laughs> the bottom line, I think, really for HOAs is they can control pretty much whatever they want on HOA property. So if they want to prevent you from taking off and landing on HOA property, technically they can. Now, can they restrict the airspace above the HOA property? They can't, just like cities can't really restrict the airspace. The airspace is federal, it's controlled by the FAA, and no one really can restrict the airspace. So unless there is a no-fly zone set up by the FAA over the HOA, then technically there is nothing uh, to prevent you from flying. Now, again, it, this kind of goes back to the discussion that we had when we talked about flying over the Indian reservations, mm -hmm. where, yeah, sure enough, you can get at the right at the fence behind the, uh, the Indian reservation and you go fly over, and that's technically legal. Is that something that you want to do? Well. Maybe not. I'm going to let you decide on that. And it, it's all about, yes, there's loopholes. Yes, you can take off from another side of a national park and then go fly and then make the whole industry look like we're a bunch of a-holes because we decide to fly, uh, pardon my French, that's not even French. But <laughs> so, so yes, uh, if you're on HOA property, they can absolutely tell you, because it's private property, they can absolutely tell you you can't fly there. And can you fly from outside? Yes, you can, technically. Yep, and actually, the going through all the articles uh, last week, um, you know, one of the HOA groups actually had done an article, um, can your community restrict where drones can fly? The FAA doesn't think so. So, and the reality is, uh, that's FAA-controlled airspace, so once you're in the air, you're okay. The big question for them is launching and landing. So if they say you can't launch and land from your home, um, then you can't launch and land from your home because you agreed to the CCNRs. So that's, that's one big issue. The second thing that I came across that was pretty interesting, um, HOAs are actually looking at drone flight to enforce HOA rules in the communities that they're governing. And so one of the things that I came across was a lot of questions about HOA is utilizing uh, video cameras for monitoring of the HOA properties and where there is and isn't an invasion of privacy. So the HOAs are looking at, hey, we could overfly all of our um, all of the tenants in the area and find out that they've got messy backyards. But that's still up in the air for the HOAs too because they already do have restrictions on filming and recording within the property. So that was pretty interesting because they might not want them flying over the community, but they might want to fly their own over the community. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of legalese attached to this. Um, and to go back to what you were saying about the FAA not being too excited about uh, having private, I would say, places set up their own uh, no drone flights. Uh, th this is not new. The, uh, with the cities, they've been fighting and telling the cities not to do it because they don't have control over the airspace. The last thing the FAA wants is to lose control, and they will never lose control uh, of the airspace, but they don't want anybody else thinking that they are in charge of the, uh, of the airspace. And there's been several cases, if you follow this, of different cities that have come up with regulation and have gone to court, have been taken to court, and have lost. And so I think for us, it's kind of a win on that side. But but again, remember that whatever you do, whatever you're going to decide to do to go against what these HOAs put in place, what these cities put in place, 
and trying to find loophole, you're just going to make the rest of our community look bad and let them find another way to screw with us and the rest of us. So please don't do that. Yep. And if you do live in an HOA, you can check with the HOAs and they've got the um, they've got their governance books. But I think this is still something that they really haven't fully addressed. And there are probably some HOAs out there writing things in right now, but it's still evolving. In the meantime, you know, best case scenario, if you dwell in one of those places, just check with them and let them know I'm I'm not looking in the neighbor's window, I swear. When I was in that HOA for a couple months, I gotta say, I had a next door neighbor who had a really cool um, uh, observatory. So he was into telescopes and stuff. And uh, I'd always look past the fence and this guy was walking around in his bathrobe and uh, slippers all day long. And uh, so if the community can deal with that, I think the community could deal with drones. I agree. All right, as always, please like and leave a comment if you have any questions. Rich Greg, is making fun of my sign. Greg got this. See. So, so as you know, I've I've been uh, I've been <laughs> I created a Udemy course which has been doing really good. There's a lot of really good feedback. Actually, I know some of you have joined uh, using some of the coupons, so thank you for doing that. Uh, and I'm working on a new course that's actually going to be geared towards private pilots, but also working on another course with Rich uh, in the meantime for people that are not commercial pilots. So. I, I've, I did some testing and I did some editing. I recorded the first chapter of the new course, which is already an hour and a half long, just one chapter. There's 11 chapters in that course. Um, but I found that this was going to be very useful because I needed one of these for my, uh, for my editing to find all the different cameras where they were. So I bought one of them and Rich is making fun of me. Greg's wife's going to need to take away his Amazon <laughs> privileges pretty soon. That's Eight bucks, by the way. Eight bucks on Amazon. <laughs> So, so that's it. Like and subscribe, leave a comment, and if you have any questions about things that may not be clear, just let us know. We'll, uh, we'll do a little video, we'll chit chat about it, and sometimes we don't have the answer, but we love doing research like we did for this, and we'll uh, do the research and try to present some facts, not just things that we pull out of uh, thin air. Yep, thanks for tuning in everybody, and fly safe. All right, see you guys.